There are two major goals for every one of us, uh, creating a harmonious family and having a successful professional career. Our next guest has been helping uh, people getting the right education, which is one of the keys of being a winner in life. Hi, Laura. Hi, Stanley. Welcome to Stanley's New America. Thank you. Let's first uh, address the general environment you work in. What is the total amount of uh, student debt uh, nationwide? It seems that uh, it's spinning out of control, at least according to the information I have from uh, the news. Yes, you're actually correct. The amount of debt right now is about $1.5 trillion. And a lot of people are talking about uh, a new bubble coming in, which will be the new student loan bubble. And more and more people are not able to pay their student loan debts. And unfortunately, those student loans cannot be discharged in a bankruptcy if, God forbid, they, fa they face extreme financial circumstances. And uh, when are they expecting uh, this bubble to burst? Um, I would project that will happen in the next three to five years. Um, I work with a lot of families and uh, it's not uncommon for parents to have over $300,000 in student loans if they have, let's say, three kids that they're, they're putting through college. Yeah. So less people can retire, cannot retire, and uh, they literally are forced into taking student loans, which they cannot pay later on. And why is it uh, this number so high in the first place? Um, so the financial aid rules for qualifying for financial aid, they were changed about two years ago. Mm -hmm. And for a family of four, for example, to be able to qualify for maximum financial aid, they have to make about thirty to $35,000 a year. Um, and not a lot of families are qualifying for financial aid. Most of the families um, are forced into taking Parent PLUS loans and student loans to send their kids to college. Um, less and less colleges are giving scholarships based on merit, based on their grades and um, ACT or SAT scores, and most more of, um, of the colleges are basing it on financial need. Why is so, that? Um, this is just the policy of the university, and uh, you know I have some brilliant kids that I work with, and they have 4.5 GPA. They're um, on top of their class, uh, you know, number one yeah. or number five, you know, in their class, and, and they they're not. Earn they don't qualify for any scholarships, so hmm. they're very limited to which schools they can attend based on what they have to take in loans. But you're talking about the recent two, three years, and uh, 1.5 trillion dollars is a huge number. I can't imagine that uh, this uh, uh, amount was uh, accumulated only for two, three years. There might be some other reasons for, for this. Maybe well, the, the price of education also. Yes, ed education actually increases at a rate of 7% each year. So uh, Steadily? Steadily, yes. Um, so students are required to, to take more and more in loans based on the increase of education. Why is this uh, education increase? Is there inflation or what, what is the reason? Well, there is inflation, obviously, but okay. you know the inflation is not at 7%. Um, okay. There is no regulation that will regulate the college tuition, how much universities are charging for education. So the government does not uh, impose a ceiling to uh, colleges, uh, limiting uh, the, in the increase in uh, tuition and expenses? Not as of right now, no. no. Okay, and uh, can you draw a comparison between American colleges and the ones in the other developed countries based on uh, price and quality of education? So the average American university right now costs about thirty-five dollars to $40,000 a year. Mm -hmm. and the average European or Canadian school costs about $3,500 a year. So it is much That's cheaper. That's substantial difference. Substantial difference. It is much cheaper to send your child to Canada or Europe, for example, than to send them to, to a college here. Mm -hmm. um, and I actually see increase in my students considering colleges abroad. Do you suggest that uh, to your, uh, to your uh, clients? Sometimes, yes. For example, I have a student who most likely will be going to 
Canada or Ireland and his major is history, so history is the same pretty much everywhere. So I assume that this is not for all, all the majors, this is for some majors? I would highly uh, stay away from colleges abroad if the students are pursuing medical or law degree. Why? I recommend colleges here. Um, well, I'll give an example with my sister. Okay. Um, she graduated from University of Frankfurt and uh, that is a very prestigious university, but when she came here to the States, um, she had very hard time finding a residency because the residency for uh, medical doctors for domestic students are much higher the, the positions than for international students. So she spent about three, four years trying to uh, fit into a, a residence program and she still did not uh, get into the ones that she desired, but she mm -hmm. had to start from somewhere. What is so unique in the way you help people uh, make the right decision towards achieving their education goals? Um, so a lot of students and a lot of parents are stressed out how they're going to navigate the whole process and how they're going to pay for college, mm -hmm. that they miss important steps along the process. Mm -hmm. uh, we take students through a process. The first one is matching them with the best career choice uh, because when they're 16 or 17, they're really lost. They don't know what choices they have. And the test that we take them through is, uh, is it's based so on... So most of them, they don't even know uh, what uh, major major they, they should be pursuing? Most of them don't know, or some of them, they don't really care because they're looking to get away from their parents and party for four years. <laughs> okay. I would say 95% of the students don't want to study in Illinois because they want to be away from their parents. As an outsider, it seems to me that the two most important things when you are looking for the right, right college and the right major is uh, to study something that you really like and eventually you're going to like uh, uh, work in that area uh, after that and that you have the right set of skills for it. Mm -hmm. And the second thing is uh, your skills and your knowledge uh, to be in demand uh, after you graduate from college. So that's exactly what we accomplish with a major assessment test. It's a yeah. personality test that, uh, you know, ask them questions, what they like, what they don't like. Mm -hmm. um, and we match them to a career that they would enjoy doing. Mm -hmm. At the same time, we talk about income and we talk about uh, job outcome, if that job is going to be in demand in the future. So we match them between what they will like doing, how much money they're they desire to make and also if they are going to be able to find a job after they graduate. So once we complete that step, um, then we recommend six to ten colleges that are a good fit for them based on their academics, their GPA, their mm -hmm. the size of school and also the schools that are going to give them enough grants and scholarships so, you, so their you parents don't give them don't several go options, not only one option? Uh, we give them over 20 options, but we recommend applying to six to ten schools. Let's watch a brief video uh, where people talk about uh, what you do and we'll continue after that. Sounds great. Hi, my name is Laura Georgieva. I'm a certified college planner and the founder of Destination College. Our mission is to help families plan and pay for college without going broke. Our team of tax, financial, and academic planning experts specialize in creating a customized guide to help students determine the right major and school of their interest and help their families comfortably afford it. We specialize in all aspects of the college planning process, taking you from pre-application to graduation, being on your site. We've been able to save families up to $40,000 a year. We also offer a 100% money-back guarantee. I'm Desmond Clark, um, former NFL player, played nine years here with the Chicago Bears from 03 to 2011. So after we sat down with Laura, she explained to us the process, how to go about admissions, even how to go about securing funds to help us pay for the classes that my wife was taking at the time. So she helped us with that, helped us save a ton of money that way, and then also educated us on how to uh, go about the admissions process for the next level of pharmacy school. Coming from a, a sports background, uh, you always want to have good teammates. And I'll tell you this, um, 
Laura is a good teammate. She'll be your quarterback and, and make sure that she get the ball in all the right places to keep moving forward. Very, very helpful in understanding. I really felt comfortable with her. And so afterwards, uh, we, I said, you know what, let's see how what we can do. And uh, I was extremely thrilled with what the results came out to. And actually, Laura helped uh, my daughter with an essay to be able to get her in there, and we got additional money. So I was thrilled. Uh, we actually saved $34,000 on tuition and grants and scholarships. And one other thing, too, is she's also helped me in regards to uh, being proactive with, with, uh, with my daughter. You know, it shouldn't be always the parent. And Laura's been nothing but very helpful. I can't say enough good things about her. And, um, you know, I don't know what else to say, but I've, I've been very, very excited and thrilled with all the stuff that she's done for me thus far. My name is Bonnie Rickman, and I met Laura Georgieva, oh gosh, years ago. I have five children, all of whom are in some form of secondary or other education. And I did my FASFAs, and Laura offered to help me do the FASFAs, and I said, nah, I got it under control. She said, no, let me help you. I said, nah, I got it under control. I've been doing this for a long time. She said, serious, let, let me help you. I said, okay, you're not really filling these things out the way you should be. Let me help you with it. Come in again. We came in again, and no joke, like uh, not too much later, maybe four weeks later, we got letters from the colleges. Two of my children got $8,500 more a piece from the school. Hi, I'm Phil Gator, and uh, I'm a client of Laura George Ava. And I have to tell you, she's one smart lady. Um, we approached her uh, to help us find and source the correct funding, find the perfect school for my son. Yeah, Laura, George Ava, and Destination College, um, amazing, amazing, spirited, gregarious, wonderful person to do business with. I told her about my younger daughter who never finished high school. She left high school almost 10 years ago. And Laura told me that she could probably help my daughter get financial aid uh, to complete her high school GED and for college tuition and expenses. And today, my daughter has completed her high school GED and she has just completed her first semester of full-time college, a full-time college program in Madison, Wisconsin and she has every expectation of going on to complete her college degree. So, I don't know how she did it, but uh, my daughter said that all of her tuition, her books, her expenses, her fees were all paid for through financial aid that Laura helped her get through the FAFSA and applications. My name is Vishal Shore. I used to be an overworked, frustrated college student before I started working with Laura. Working with her, I've really started to feel at ease and her expertise has guided me through some very important decisions. She's taught me how to keep my options open at a time when I felt like I did not have any options. Because of her, I am attending a school that I thought I had no possibility of attending. She has helped me save so much money in the process. She has helped me more than I ever want to know with things I don't want to know. Getting my daughter into college. Student loans and what's out there with FAFSA and, and writing essays and just all these things that she offers, um, I'd have been lost without her. Why did you choose uh, this line of business? Um, so I always believed in education and um, I was a financial planner before I became a college planner mm -hmm. and I constantly attended different advanced planning seminars and at mm -hmm. one of the seminars they were talking about um, college planning in a way of getting more scholarships, more grants and I decided to get certified as a college planner. Mm -hmm. Um, I was the 11th certified college planner in Illinois. I saw a lot of my clients deplete their retirement accounts to pay for college. And this was just the perfect time and the perfect opportunity for me to um, help people and at the same time create a great business. Isn't it more lucrative and easier, relatively easier to work with investors uh, rather than uh, parents and students? What do you mean by investors? Uh, when you are a financial planner, you're working with uh, people who had a lot of money and uh, helping them invest, invest it. I can make bigger difference with students, helping them select the best career and seeing them succeed in life. 
Uh, many of my students already are in the work field and uh, mm -hmm. just hearing from them how successful they are. So, so what you're trying to say is that you have some moral satisfaction. Yes. It seems to me from uh, what I know uh, about your business that uh, you work uh, more with parents rather than uh, the students themselves. Parents are the ones that seek my help. Yeah. Uh, but they're once the first they're, they're the first initial contact yeah. uh, because they want to make sure that their child is selecting the best college option for them. They're happy, they will be successful, and at the yeah. same time, the parents are concerned about going broke, paying for college. So well, when I start Both of these things make sense to me. Absolutely. So yeah. the parents are the ones that drag their child to my office. Yeah. Um, and then eventually I have to get their trust and their interest to continue working with me. But I tell yeah. the parents that at this point I will continue working only with your child. You yeah. will be um, updated on mm -hmm. bigger you know, uh, decisions or deadlines. Mm -hmm. But it is your child's responsibility um, and accountability to uh, participate and be responsible for this process and if they don't they really shouldn't be going to college. Would you point out some uh, common mistakes uh, made by uh, parents or students? One of the major ones is not knowing what they want to study because if they select the wrong major this might cost them more time and money along the way if they switch mm -hmm. majors down the the road. Um, mm -hmm. I recommend taking the ACT or SAT exam at least three times because every time when they retake the test, mm -hmm. the score goes higher and the higher the score, the more scholarships they would get so choosing later. Choosing the right uh, major the first time around is uh, saving uh, time and money. Exactly. Um, also, it's very important to file FAFSA, which is the financial aid form to apply for mm -hmm. uh, grants in October. Uh, filing it, let's say, in December might disqualify them for thousands of dollars in financial So the timing aid. is important here. The timing is very important. Um, what also about the, the form itself? Can anybody uh, fill, it, uh, fill it successfully or it also requires some knowledge? Of course it requires some knowledge and I always say that it's, an, uh, it's an easy form to mess it up. So uh, just not including, you know, something. So many something. people think, uh, so they are, uh, overestimate the excuse and knowledge and they uh, think that they will be successful but and, and they're not looking for help. Well, for well. example, I had a student this, this week who filled out FAFSA by himself. He did okay. most of the things actually right but FAFSA he, uh, he filled it out wrong and he okay. reported his mom's income twice and okay. this disqualified him for financial aid so he lost $36,000. Just because of a technical mistake? Because of a technical mistake. And then okay. when he came to my office, I was able to catch that and correct it. So now he'll be going to school for free. Chicago is one of the most cosmopolitan cities in the world uh, where you can uh, uh, find people from all over the world. Uh, what ethnicities uh, do you usually work with? Um, any kind of ethnicity. Uh, the, the kids that I really love working with are kids that have been going through a lot of uh, yeah. hardships. Um, they either lost both of their parents or going through Why extreme circumstances. Why do you like working with those kids? It, uh, it seems to me it's difficult to work with them. They're very mature, they're goal-oriented. Oh, they they're know more mature than the... They know what they yeah. want from life and uh, that's why I started my non-for-profit too, to help homeless kids and single moms go to college. Do you consider your business uh, a mission, cause, uh -huh. uh, not only uh, like uh, regular business? Well, I consider everything that I do in life a cause. Yeah. And I, uh, I love helping people. Okay. And that's my primary goal. There is a general perception that uh, if you don't study hard, you won't be successful in life. Is that always true? Um, yes, it is. It's much easier to find a job with a college degree than uh, with a high school degree or not even having a high school degree. Yeah, but having a college degree doesn't guarantee you a job. Uh, that's correct. It doesn't guarantee you a job. It guarantees you uh, that you're going to spend a lot of money. In my opinion, having a passion for something uh, will make you successful. A college okay. degree is not uh, guaranteed, as you said, that you will be successful after you graduate from college. How focused should be really students on studying versus uh, enjoying uh, their time uh, during the college years? You mean party schools versus yeah. goal-oriented schools? Yeah, what, what should be the ratio? <laughs> the reasonable um, ratio there. 
Well, I have a, a talk with all of my students before they go to college okay. and I tell them common no mistakes. Party. Well, I, I don't tell them don't party, but I tell mm. them other mistakes what other students have done and they were kicked out of college because of those mistakes. So okay. going to a university is, is not a joke. You know, they have rules and if those rules are not followed, they can get kicked out of school. Mm -hmm. um, so it is important to enjoy life, but as, as long as they don't overdo it, Mm -hmm. And they keep in mind that the goal is to graduate from college with a good GPA and take enough internships and participate in study abroad and research opportunities. So the goal is to be successful in life. At the same time, they still have to enjoy it, but mm -hmm. not to the extreme that they will be kicked out of college and their parents have to pay back the scholarships and the grants that they were given. If you invest more money in education, does it necessarily mean that uh you have a better results in your professional career? In my opinion, yes. So the more money is spent in education, the better results you have in your professional career? What I meant was having a degree, bachelor's or master's. No, what I meant was if you spend more money, okay, if you go to the most expensive college, does it mm -hmm. mean that you have a better result than someone who went to a less expensive uh, college? Uh, no, uh, because again, what they do with their college education is more important than uh, the brand of the school that they attend. So you think that some colleges are expensive because their brand is uh, like... Well, for example, ha Harvard or Northwestern, everybody knows those colleges, so okay. they charge seventy-five, eighty thousand dollars so a year. Some people pay for the brand and not necessarily for the... Uh, uh, for, for, for the quality. For a the lot course. of parents care about rankings and the higher the ranking, the higher the price. Okay, do employers care about the brand of the college when they hire people or they actually care more about the knowledge and the skills and the personality of the uh, applicant? Well, they do and don't. Um, obviously, it is important to go to a prestigious university, mm -hmm. but again, participating in internships and having the experience and doing something out of the student's comfort zone and out of the box mm. would make them unique and more employable than just the name of the university. Some of the big businesses were uh, started in, in a garage like uh, Amazon, Microsoft, Google, Dell, Disney, to name a few. It turns out to start a uh, big uh, business empire, all you need is a garage. Is that uh, the case? I mean, do, do you agree with that? Well, again, we we'll go back to the passion of doing something. And in my opinion, it's better to work out of your parents' garage than live in the parents' basement. And by the way, some of these people were uh, college dropouts too. Yeah, so they were probably too smart and they were bored when they were in college. Yeah, maybe they were bored, yeah. Uh, because they didn't offer them enough new you know, technology or innovations yeah. or something that they were hungry for and they did it themselves. So they're maybe in a way ahead of uh, what they've been uh, offered in Most college. Most likely, yes. How long can you live in your parents' house before people uh, start labeling you a late bloomer? <laughs> um, it's really up to the, that's the parents' choice. Yeah, um, but I'm not talking about the parents, I'm talking about the people, the, the society. Mm -hmm. um, I would say, again, you know, it's, it's individual, but in my opinion, as long as the student is pursuing some kind of passion and they're doing something with their life and not wasting their their time. So they can, they can live uh, all, all, all their life in, in their parents' a lot, of, a lot of students are getting too comfortable living in their parents' houses okay. and they're not uh, pushed to really apply themselves yeah. because they don't have any bills to pay and yeah. What is their motivation? Is this to really, really a trend a with the with the with the new generation or generations? This like mil, uh, millennials and this generation X. Is this a new trend with them? Living longer uh, with their parents. It is a big problem. Yes, and I always also. Is approached, it a trend? Um, I don't know if it's a tr if it's a trend, but it it happens quite often. I was okay. also approached by a parent whose daughter graduated university with three majors. Mm -hmm and she's not happy with any of those three majors so she was trying to find what she wants to do a year ago uh, you received uh, an award f uh, from uh, daily herald mm -hmm. uh, influential woman in business what does it mean to you um, it, it means a lot i um, 
really didn't think that I uh, would be one of the recipients of this award. One mm -hmm. of my business coaches nominated me for the award and when I got the call that uh, I won that, I was actually in tears because... Uh, it's a recognition for your uh, efforts. I am a very hard worker. Uh, yeah. I also don't want, like to brag about myself, uh, yeah. but I came to this country in 2003. Okay. So, um, did you know English? I did. Knew, I did uh, study English in Bulgaria. Yeah. Okay. Let's wrap uh, our show with uh, the most important advice uh, you can give to someone who is uh, searching for the right college. I would say start early. Um, as soon as freshman year in high school, uh, yeah. do research on the colleges where the kids want to apply to, uh, research on scholarships, financial aid, which universities are a good fit for the student, yeah. go on college visits so you're not surprised when the college applications are due and you have to figure this out in a month or two. Thanks for coming, Laura. Thank you.